Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to tie one of my favorite stonefly imitations called the Montana Stone. It can be tied on any streamer or nymph hook from about a size 6 or 8 all the way down to a size 12 to 14. So first we're going to start with black thread. And starting the thread right behind the hook eye. And winding all the way back to the hook shank just building up a nice thread base right like so and then I'm just going to trim that little excess thread right there Next, I want to add weight to the hook shank, so I will be adding 0.025 lead wire. I have a special bobbin which I've set aside uh, to rig uh, my lead wire onto the hook shank. And what I do with that is I just start right in front of the hook point and wind my way forward and what I look for is I look for even lengths of the hook shank exposed on either end this, inform this uh, ensures that the hook will sink uniformly it looks like about right there it's pretty even might even take one wrap back on this side. Beautiful. Okay, now that I have that, I'm going to wind my thread forward and through the lead wire all the way to the other end. And then I'm going to come back. And now, what I'm going to do is in front of the lead wire, I'm just going to build a nice smooth taper of thread. You try to make it as gradual of a taper as possible. Possible. I don't really want it to be a steep taper. And what this will do is when I'm ready to wrap the thorax, it'll make the transition from this portion down to the head uh, a lot more easier, as you'll soon see. So something that looks about like that should do good. That's pretty gradual and uniform and then I'm just going to make some crisscross wraps over the lead wire to give it some better to uh, secure it better to the hook shank so it doesn't spin and then I'm going to do the same thing on the butt end <laughs> or tail end of the fly I'm just going to build up that same gradual taper all the way to the bend of the hook shank or the bend of the hook See how I'm doing there, and again, that just aids in the transition onto the lead wire. Now, right like that. All right, there we go. So now that we have that, we're going to take some black or dark brown. any color of your choosing, whatever the stone flies in your local stream, whatever color they are. I'm going to just peel two of those goose bites off to the side and trim them off. And then I'm going to take one goose bite and flip it around the other way. And then even the tips up. Kind of have to play with them a little bit to get this to work out right. And there we go. And what that does by turning them, turning one around the other way, as I said, is it gives you 
a nice split tail. See how the see how the bends oppose each other. One bends up, the other bends down. Uh, makes a nice split tail. If any of y'all have ever seen a stonefly nymph on the rear end of them, they have these two little split tails uh, coming off of them. They also have two large antennae on the front. But some people uh, imitate those. Some people don't. I say if the fish is hungry, he's going to eat it no matter what. So, uh, but anyway, what I want to do next is I want to measure about a third, about a third to half of the hook shank length, and that's about how long I want to make my tail. Somewhere, as long as you're somewhere between a third and a half, and then I want to take the butt ends of those goose bites and just lay them right across the hook shank, one on either side, and then do one loose wrap and cinch it up, get them positioned on the hook shank, and then make my next wraps one right in front of the other. And once I get about five to six wraps on there, I'm going to trim the butt ends of the goose bite. Right like that. And then I'm going to just cover them with a the thread. Once I get them covered, I'm going to wind back to the same point right in, right in front of the tail. And I'm going to grab some black chenille. This is medium sized black chenille, but you can adjust accordingly for the size hook that you tie. When you start getting down into the smaller flies, You'll greatly benefit from either using a almost uh, like Vernell Varnel. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Help me out there if you know. Uh, it's still basic. It's chenille, but it's just smaller diameter than what this is, and it, it ends up having pretty good results. It looks great. Uh, the other thing you can do when you start getting into the smaller sizes like that is just put dubbing on it. Just use dubbing. Anyway, uh, what I did there was I stripped the fibers off of the core. They have a, chenille has this little thread core that's kind of twisted, you know, to splay the fibers out. So what you do is you just pick a few of those fibers out on the end and you're left with this nice little thread core. It's much easier to tie in than just the fibers themselves. So... Just want to position that right on top of the hook shank with one loose wrap and then two, three, four, five. Just cover up the ends there. I didn't leave enough to really to trim, so we'll get those ends covered up. And now I want to come to a point with my thread winding it to the front and where I stop right at the last two lap two wraps of lead wire. And then once I get there, I'm gonna take my chenille and you begin to wrap it up the hook shank just laying one wrap right in front of the other so that there's no spaces you can see how having that taper build up has kind of given me a uniform taper at the rear of the fly coming up onto the lead wire okay, make sure you lay each wrap right in front of the other try not to overlap like that you see you get a little bit of bulk built up in the fly you don't want that. You want each wrap just to be right in front of the other. It makes it nice and even. And uh, chenille has a way of producing sort of a natural segmentation. <laughs> I think it shows up real well in the video how uh, just laying each wrap in front of each other, how how you create a naturally segmented thorax without having to or uh, abdomen without having to add any extra rib or any other special magic tricks. So then once you get it wrapped up to that point where your thread you can get a hold of it, just make one loose wrap, tighten it down, and then position the chenille on top of the hook shank and make the corresponding wraps right in front. 
Now, I'm not going to trim this bit of chenille. I'm going to leave it. And I've got it pinned back out of the way, back here. And the very next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a nice and webby, very webby saddle hackle. I want I want my fibers my fibers or barbels on the feather can be slightly oversized uh, but the key is is that they're webby the webbiness adds action in the water because they're softer fibers they pulsate they do things anyway I'm gonna take that little saddle hackle I'm just going to trim out a bit of stem there so I can tie it in and when I tie it in I want to tie the feather in shiny side up I'm just going to make one loose wrap over it get it positioned where I want it and then make my securing wraps. And I like to do three to four uh, securing wraps. Seems like that does really well for not having materials pull out on you. Secures it nicely to the hook shank. Next what I want to do is I want to take some shade of yellow uh, chenille. It can be a golden yellow, it can be gold, uh, you can't even venture so far as into going in with yellow with shades of red, kind of giving you an orangey or a burnt orange. Uh, trout in my area seem to be pretty partial to, yellow, to both yellows and oranges, so either color works real well around here. Now I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to strip those fibers out, expose that thread core, and tie that in right in front of my black chenille. And then I'm just going to wind and bind those butt ends down to the hook shank. And now I'm going to wind to the starting point of the thread. I'm not going to go up to the hook eye. I'm going to save that for building the thread head. But I'm going to go to right where I started the, the thread at to avoid crowding the hook eye and then I'm just going to use the same process that I used for wrapping the abdomen I'm just going to lay one wrap right in front of the other all the way to the front till I meet up with my thread which is about right there and then I'm going to grab the chenille and tie it in and make my wraps to secure it And I'm just going to trim that little bit off as close to the hook eye as I possibly can. And I'm going to take my saddle hackle and I'm going to begin to wrap it around the thorax. And I want to make about three wraps. Let's see. And I like to counter wrap my saddle hackle as well. It kind of adds a little bit of uh, the what I want to say, kind of strengthens this thorax section. Or maybe it, you had to put a little less wraps in. That kind of thing, so it kind of gives it uh, counter wrapping like that. It kind of gives something for the chenille to go against so it won't just unravel. Right, it's got something that's uh, counteracting it to, to keep it wound onto the hook shank. And there's three wraps. Now after I've made three wraps, I want to just hold that feather. Now we're ready to tie off. So what we're going to do to tie this off is the same thing we used to tie it in. We're just going to strip the last little remaining barbels off that are close there to the hook eye or hook shank. And then we're just going to grab that and tie that feather in. I'm going to use three to four securing wraps just like I did previously. Now that we got that in, I'm just going to trim it off as close to the hook shank as I can. 
And for the last step, I'm going to come back to my black chenille that I had tied, uh, tied off and saved. And I'm just going to pull it over the top of the yellow in the, in the palmered hackle. And I'm going to make one wrap. And at the same time as I'm making the wrap, I'm going to pull the chenille tight over the thorax to secure it in place. Just like that. And then I'm going to do the same principle. Get down there snug close to the hook eye and trim off that chenille. Now I'm going to form the thread head. I'm going to pull as much of my hackle fibers back and out of the way as I possibly can. And I'm just going to build a nice thread head right here at the front of the hook shank. And it's looking good right there. Grab the old whip finisher. And on the whip finisher it's one, two, three, four, five wraps. And we're going to back up. I caught some fibers there. There we go. It's going to be one, two, three, four, and five wraps. Put that guy in there. Cinch that thread on down tight. And trim the excess. Now, you may get like I did there, and you still, when you tied in or tied off or something, you still trapped in a few barbs, a few feather barbs. So what I like to do is I like to just grab those, tuck them out of the way of the hook eye. I know that's probably hard to see, but I take them, and I pull them away from the hook eye, and I just trim them out of the way. On top there. And there it is. That is the Montana stone. Thank you for watching.